Hello, my beloved. How are you doing today? Are you living your best life? Are you enjoying who you are? Are you just blossoming to the fullest? Today is really your day that you can just be who you are with all your heart. And today we are reading together A Course in Miracles. And it's our lesson 152. The power of decision is my own. No one can suffer loss unless it be his own decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects this state of for him. No one can grieve, no fear, no think him sick unless these are the outcomes that he wants. And no one dies without his own cons consent. Nothing occurs but represents your wish, and nothing is omitted that you choose. Here is your word, complete in all details. Here is its whole reality for you, and it is only here salvation is. You may believe that this position is extreme and too inclusive to be true, yet can truth have exceptions? If you have the gift of everything, can loss be real? Can pain be part of peace or grief of joy? Can fear and sickness enter in a mind where love and perfect, perfect holiness abide? Truth must be all-inclusive, if it be the truth at all. Accept no opposite and no exceptions, for to do, is, for to do so is the contradict the truth and Entirely. Salvation is the recognition that the truth is true and nothing else is true. This you have heard before, but may not yet accept both parts of it. Without the first, the second has no meaning, but without the second is the first no longer true. Truth cannot have an opposite. This cannot be too often said and thought about, for it for if what is not true is true as well as what is true, then part of truth is false, and truth has lost this, its meaning. Nothing but the truth is true, and what is false is false. This is the simplest of distinctions, yet the most obscure, but not because it is a difficult distinction to perceive. It is concealed behind the west of array of choices that do not appear to be entirely your own, and thus the truth appears to have some aspects that belie consistently, but do not seem to be but contradictions introduced by you. As God created you, you must remain unchangeable, with transitory states by definition false, and that includes all shifts in feeling, alterations in conditions of the body and the mind, in all awarenesses and in all response. This is the all-inclusiveness, which sets the truth apart from falsehood, and the false keeps separate from the truth as what it is. It is not strange, strange that you believe to think you made the word you see is arrogance. God made it not. Of this you can be sure. What can he know of the ephemeral, the sinful, the sinful and the guilt, the afraid, the suffering and lonely, and the mind that lives within a body that must die? You but accuse him of insanity, to think he made a world where such things seem to have reality. He is not mad, yet only madness makes a world like this. To think that God made chaos contradicts his will, invented opposite, opposites to truth, and suffers death to triumph over life. All this is arrogance. Humility would see at once these things are not of him. And can you see what God created not? 
to think you can is merely to believe you can perceive what God will not to be. And what could be more arrogant than this? Let us today be truly humble and accept what we have made as what it is. The power of decision is our own. The sigh but to accept your rightful place as co-creator of the universe and all you think you made will disappear. What rises to awareness then will be all that there ever was, eternity, eternally as it is now. And it will take the place of self-deceptions made but to usurp the altar to the Father and the Son. Today we practice the humility, abandoning the false pretense by which the ego seeks to prove it arrogant. Only the ego can be arrogant, but truth is humble in acknowledging its mightiness, in changelessness and its eternal wholeness, all-encompassing God's perfect gift to His beloved Son. We lay aside the arrogance which says, which says that we are sinners, guilty and afraid, ashamed of what we are, and lift our hearts in the true humility instead to Him who has created us immaculate, like to Himself in power and in love. The power of decision is our own, and we accept of Him that which we are, and humbly recognize the Son of God. To recognize God's Son implies as well that all self-concepts have been laid aside and recognized as false. Their arrogance has been perceived, and in humility, the radiance of God's Son, His gentleness, His perfect sinlessness, His Father's love, His right to heaven and release from hell, are joyously accepted as our own. Now do we join in glad acknowledgement that lies are false, and only truth is true. We think of truth alone as we arise, and spend five minutes practicing its ways, encouraging our frightened minds with this. The power of decision is my own. This day I will accept myself as what my father's will created me to be. Then we will wait in silence, giving up, up all self-deceptions as we humbly ask ourselves that he reveal himself to us and he who never left will come again to our awareness, grateful to restore his home to God as it was meant to be. In patience wait for him throughout the day and hourly in, invite him with the words with which the day begin, concluding it with, the, with this same invitation to yourself. God's voice will answer, for he speaks for you and for your father. He will substitute the peace of God for all your frantic thoughts, the truth of God for self-deceptions, and God's Son for your illusions of yourself. Lesson 152 The power of decision is my own. So, my loves, have a beautiful day and you really who you are. Listen to your heart. Just do more. What really makes you happy? Follow your bliss and Joseph Campbell and just love yourself even more. Have a lovely day. Bye.